It's The Breakaway, presented by Frontier Communications. Caleb, first road trip coming up of the 2017 season. One thing I've noticed whenever we're on the road, you're reading a new book every time. What's your favorite type of book to read? It's a good question. Um, I try to read stuff where I can learn something. It always goes back to my job. I, I probably should read more uh, non-soccer or non-leadership stuff, but you know, when I have time to read, I want to get better. So um, I actually, you see a different book every time. I don't know if I've <laughs> finished all those books. I probably have 10 that I haven't finished. I'm good at starting them. What's been one of your favorites in the last couple months? Wow, good question. I'm reading one right now uh, that actually I read maybe five years ago, but I wanted to re <laughs> reread re because sometimes you need to do that to remind yourself, but it's called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, hmm. and it's a leadership fable, and uh, it's very interesting. So you like reading about leadership and how you can be a better head coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it's a job, but it's a, it's a passion. It's a it's my life. So, um, you know, if I'm reading, I want to get better. So what are some things you've taken away? What are some of the things that have resonated with you, maybe that you've read recently or in this book that made you want to reread it? Well, I think, again, in this book, you know, it talks about the five main dysfunctions of any team, and not just a sports team. The, the actual leadership fable is a, is a business, and it goes through the characters in this company and... Uh, it was an underperforming company and it talks about why it was underperforming and some of the dysfunctions and um, the interesting thing is the number one dysfunction of any team is absence of trust hmm. and so in terms of looking at our club just making sure that you know we have a group of guys that are on board with each other trusting each other uh, and the staff as well and you know trust is a pretty fluffy word um, it takes time to, to build that and, and it takes attention to build that. So uh, we've tried to do that this off season. And what do you find is the best way for you personally to build trust with your players? Individually, everyone's different. Everyone probably has different pressure points and things that they care about. How do you go about finding out what those are and gaining the trust of your team? Really simple, you know, it's the day to day and being honest and uh, being up front and communicating and you know you can't fake it right you can't fake it you know players know when uh, you're honest they know when you care about them and I try to just uh, you know be honest and up front and I try to care about them you know I, I love my players mm -hmm. and uh, if you don't like your players you're probably not going to make it too long as a coach were there coaches when you played professionally or even when you were growing up that you remember had some of the qualities that you now look to emulate? Yeah, I always try to learn from, from everybody that I come into contact with, um, not just coaches, but everybody. You can always learn something from, from everybody and you can learn something every single day. Um, I've learned a lot from the coaches that I've had. Uh, in some cases I've learned what not to do right. uh, in a lot of cases I've learned what works um, you know based on what I felt as a player um, you know Jerry Yeagley I use his name a lot I remember sitting in the locker room with him and wanting to run through a wall because I knew he cared about me and um, when we lost games uh, I was almost I almost felt more bad because I knew he was upset uh, than actually how I felt and I thought to myself if I could harness that with my players uh, that's a pretty powerful thing so I look back on my time at Indiana with him a lot because he was a master of psychology and a great leader and he really cared about us as people and when are there any moments in the last couple of years here in Portland when you've really felt hey I have what I had with Jerry at Indiana with some of the players here I mean to me it stands out when Adi comes and runs, I think it was two years ago, scored his first goal of the season and picked you up. You're the first one he picked up to celebrate. Are there other moments, it could be that one, but that that it clicked for you? I think it's, um, it's something you can't take for granted, is what I'll say. Um, when you take for granted that your players trust you, when you take for granted that your players know you care about them, uh, then usually you're getting lazy as a coach. And so for me, I wake up every day and I remind myself I'm in a business of coaching people. 
Uh, obviously, I coach soccer, but I'm coaching people, and these guys are human beings. They have different lives. They have different things, different motivations. Um, but ultimately, if I can uh, captivate them as people and help them and get them to trust and buy in, uh, then I'll get them to perform. Uh, but it can't be, like I said, a shallow, empty, right. empty thing. And sometimes it's hard in this business because ultimately results are always on the line. But you can never forget that, um, that, that my greatest power and strength is as a leader um, you know, to these guys. As a leader, in addition to having that trust, I would think that keeping guys motivated, excited, and keeping things fresh would be really important. I'm curious for um, a guy like Darlington Nagby, who this is now the fifth year coaching him here. You coached him at Akron. How do you keep things fresh for him so it's not the same thing he's heard? Obviously, you've evolved as a coach, but how do you keep him motivated? Yeah, great question. I mean, it's, it's not easy when you have the same guys over and over again. And I think, you know, you have to keep it simple and um, more concise and, you know, talk less. Obviously, they know what you're going to say a lot of times, but also um, change what you do. You know, you have to do that. You have to tweak things. You have to keep it fresh. You have to continue to stimulate your players. You can't say the same thing every single day, every single week for, you know, five straight years. Yep. Um, and if you're doing that, you're probably losing because the game's evolved. And you're not. <laughs> yeah, and what worked last year isn't always going to work the next year. And what worked last game isn't always going to work. You know, you can't assume that. Um, players want familiar familiarity. They want continuity and consistency. Uh, but they certainly want new things as well. And you have to, you have to bring new things to them or, or they stop listening. Well, Caleb, thank you so much for the insight into your brain and how you're approaching your team. Really appreciate it as always for coming on and for your time.